Good day. Hello there. Welcome to Light Embassy, taking His glory to the ends of the world. Today's devotion is captioned, Push on in prayer. Push on in prayer. And our team scripture is taken from the Gospel of Luke chapter 18 verse 1. I'm reading from the KJV. Luke says, and he spake a parable, who, and Jesus spake a parable, spoke a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men ought always to pray and not to faint. Men are always supposed to pray and not to faint. Longevity doesn't mean things will not change. Longevity doesn't mean things will not change. Sometimes when people have prayed for a while and don't see any change, they give up and assume that God won't come true for them. This is not true at all. You have to understand that time also is a test of faith. When God was in flesh, when God himself was in flesh, he explained that longevity doesn't mean that God is not willing to help. But sometimes that's how what longevity translates to for some Christians. They think that because the thing has persisted for a while, it means God is unwilling to help me. So they question the love of God because of such things, because of time. But God himself, when he was in flesh, explained that longevity doesn't mean that he, God, is not willing to help you. That he, God, is not desirous to help you. As a Christian, you have no excuse to give up, no matter the case, no matter the situation. Because Jesus addressed all the different circumstances we find ourselves. That's the, that's the nice thing about the Word of God. You see, every situation is addressed in the Word of God. Sometimes even those ones you don't have direct, direct illustrations that way. You see paths and patterns. You see, it's to, 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 to help you understand the mind of God concerning such situations. So everything, God has spoken to every kind of circumstance or situation in, the, in His Word. And that is why you have no excuse. He spoke to everything. He addressed all kinds of situations and matters. Luke says, And he spake a parable unto them, to this end, to this conclusion, that men, to this purpose, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. So God himself is telling you and I that we are, we are supposed to always, we are obligated to always pray. It's a necessity for us to always pray and not to faint. God himself is telling you and I that men ought always to pray and not to give up. God is the one telling us that we are supposed to always be praying and not to give up. He says you are not supposed to give up because of longevity. You are always to pray and not to give up. This is, this is God himself speaking to you. And, that's, this, and this should give you courage. Courage, you see. Courage. You don't have to despair because God himself is speaking to this situation. This is what Jesus was implying. He talked about the unjust judge and the persistent widow. The widow who was not going to give up. This unjust judge because of the consistent troubling of the widow had to finally grant her wish. And the master said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. Though he is long suffering with them, though he bear long with them. How did he end the parable? He went on to say, he said, I tell you that he, God, will avenge them speedily, he will avenge them with quickness. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? This was the rhetorical question he concluded with. 
So nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on this earth? This means something. This means that faith is persistent in prayer. This means that faith never gives up. It means that faith doesn't define itself by time. These are not the words of a man, pastor or an apostle, but these were the direct words of God himself. When God himself was in flesh, that's what he, how he addressed faith and our prayer life. He says that longevity has nothing to do with God's willingness. And he also said that faith is persistent. Faith has to be like the, the, the widow, the stubborn widow, the widow who will not relent. That is what he's talking about here. The longevity has nothing to do with God's willingness to help you. It is a test of faith. You ought to be stubborn with your faith. That's what the master was implying. You ought to be, you have to be stubborn with our faith, a faith which will not relent. The widow was a stubborn woman. You were not going to get her to back down. This should be your attitude when it comes to faith. You may find yourself in a problem which has prolonged for long. Don't give up. Refuse to drown. Don't back down. Who is speak, saying these things to you? It's God. Jesus himself said these things to you. That is why you should be courageous. You see, this should stir up your faith like the widow, like the stubborn widow. You to be stubborn and persevere. For stubborn faith will always win. Stubborn faith will always win. You see, stubborn faith will always win. You see, this, this is, you see, who is going to answer your prayer? It is God. The God is going to answer that prayer when he was in flesh. He is the one who said these things to you. That yes, I know you are praying to me. I am the God that you are praying to. And I know things are taking long. But I'm telling you that things taking long does not mean that I'm not willing to help you. Things that taking long does not mean that I will not come through for you. But things taking long is also a test of your faith. Therefore, I'm saying to you, persevere like the stubborn widow. Don't back down. Be persistent. Be persistent like the stubborn widow troubled on just judge. That she will not relent. She will not give up. She will not back down. She will not waver. She will not faint. The one who is going to answer your prayer is telling you that. Rest assured. Don't back down. If you will persist with this stubborn faith in prayer, I will avenge you with quickness of speed. You have no excuse, therefore, as a Christian to give up. You have no excuse, therefore, to relent. You have no excuse, therefore, to be in fear and sorrow because things are taking long. Now, somebody said, Brother Lev, does it mean that I should wait for 10 years or 20 years? Or you say, No, no, no. See, sometimes many Christians they ask certain questions which are not right. You are dealing with God. Are you wiser than God? Now, for instance, if you, a man, knows that you are jobless and you don't have anyone taking care of you, it's not that someone provides for you, you need to provide for yourself. And you need a job. The Bible says that he that have to, to feed, has to work, labor to, 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 to eat. God is not going to test your faith with time for one year or, or four years. Because by the time that the four years elapse, you'll be in heaven by that time then. You have starved to death. So that, that God is wiser than man. You see, so you have to understand you are dealing with a wise God. So if your time is going to test your faith, the context is very important. It's not even, God is not saying that I'll take 10 years before I give you a job. I'll take 4 years before I give you a job. For instance, if you are someone and then someone is providing for you, but then you also you need a job. Time then can be a test of that faith. Time can be a test of that faith. Right? So God, God is a God of wisdom. God is a God of wisdom. And that is why you have to push in faith and believe. For instance, if you, you are praying about marriage, maybe your marriage is in tatters. You want a restoration in your marriage. 
and, and you have prayed for six months, one year, things are not changing. Why then are you giving up? That, that man, is he dead? That woman, is she dead? If two of you are still alive, that means that there can still be a change. You see, so th- these are a different contest. These are the different contest. Now also, does it mean, you know, some people, they have, as a Christian, they have this mentality. Uh, they pray for maybe one week and then after they will say, oh, God's time is the best. <laughs> they are waiting passively for God's time. Or did not hear what Jesus said? The time is not d- defined by God. It's also determined by you. What did he say? He says that, I tell you, God will avenge his own elect speedily. But what was the condition for God to quickly come through for them? The condition was them approaching the issue with a persistent faith, a faith which was not unrelentless, a faith which will not give up, a faith which will not back down. If you have that kind of faith, then God will speedily come through. But if you go passively and say, oh, I'm waiting on God, God's time is the best. Nothing will come true for you. So people have to understand how the kingdom of praise. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, as he says, from the time of John the Baptist till now, the kingdom of God has suffered violence, and the violent taken it by force. You understand what Jesus meant by that statement? He was talking about faith. He was talking that faith, you, when it comes to the kingdom things, you need to press in. It's not passive. It's not that I'm waiting on God like many people say, oh, God's time, I'm waiting on God. <laughs> I'm, I, I'm leaving it to God. No, 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 no. Jesus said, from the time of John the Baptist to now, the kingdom of God suffered violence, and the violence take care of it by force. It means you press in. You have to press, you have to strive to obtain. When it comes, It's not passive receiving. You have to be active in your prayer life. You have to be active in your receiving. That's what the master was saying. You have to strive. That's why it's a fight of faith. That is what he was trying to say. You have to strive to obtain. Like the stubborn woman. He didn't passively stay in the house and said, Oh, I'm waiting on the unjust judge. I'm waiting on the unjust judge. No, 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 no. Jesus said he was always going to the unjust judge. The house of the unjust judge going to him, troubling him. Won't you, won't you come true for me? Won't you come true for me? You have to come true for me. Now, it doesn't mean that that's how you have to approach God in prayer. You see, this was a parable. It doesn't mean that you to go to God and then be mama. God, God is against mama. And that's not what Jesus was trying to say. It's a problem. Just an illustration. He just trying. It's a just star position. He's just trying to say that. Also, when it comes to your faith approach, you have to be stubborn. You have to not be back down. That's the implication. He's not saying that go and mama. That's not what he's saying. That's why he ended up saying, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith? So in this approach, it has to be an approach of faith, not an approach of murmuring. You see, the only thing he wants you to take from the widow's case is that the same way the widow would not back down, the same way the widow was persistent, you to be persistent and not back down in your prayer life and your faith work. He says, have a stubborn faith. That is what the master is trying to tell us as Christians to do when it comes to our prayer life and our faith work. In our faith work. We love it. No matter the problem that you may be going through, don't back down. Be stubborn in your faith. Be stubborn in your faith. For stubborn faith will always produce. Stubborn faith will always produce. Jesus said, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth. God bless you.